Well, what we have here is a Sony Infolithium M-Series battery that has been dissected for the purposes of science. This is how I'm spending my uh, evening wrapping up Thanksgiving 2022, going through a number of these Infolithium batteries that have been putting up quite a bit of a fight. This was one that I actually just purchased, and the pink little tag on it was put on it by me to denote that it's got some kind of an internal issue with the uh, the cells themselves and this seems to be standard fare for these Infolithium M series batteries um, the larger capacity models as well as the larger capacity L series batteries here we have another one this is an NP-F950 this one too has a pink tag if you look carefully and I've actually got this connected to a knockoff K-Star uh, DC charger and I have yet another knockoff charger over here. I have a genuine Sony battery charger trying to rejuvenate this uh, higher capacity SQ type infolithium M battery. And I have even more Sony M series infolithium battery chargers over here plugged into the wall. I've got two of them. And unfortunately they are putting up Quite a bit of a fight. These two came bundled with the camcorder that I purchased. This is an NP-FM50. This is also an FM50. And these are genuine Sony batteries near as I can tell. Nothing looks askew about them. But both of them now, I thought only one at first, which is why only one has a pink tag, but now two of them are causing an error to come up on the camcorder complaining about the use of infolithium batteries or the lack thereof. This is my broken Sony CCD-TRV608 which I just use as a test bed of sorts for questionable batteries and the like. And if I connect this up and turn it on, see it says for infolithium battery only, after a moment or two it turns off. So this is a fully charged working FM50 battery, but there's something wrong with, I'm assuming, the infolithium chip in here, and it's not uh, relaying the message onto the camera that it's a genuine battery, and this one is doing the same thing. If we give this one a moment, it should start complaining that this isn't a genuine battery. Though I don't know, it did it on this camera, it's not doing it on this one at the moment, but I'm sure if we give it a moment or two to catch up, it'll uh, realize what's going on. So I also bought this one because I've been trying to get a higher capacity M-series battery to use with uh, what's now going to become my uh, daily driver digital 8 camcorder, the one I'm using to record this video. And so I thought this was a great deal. This was picked up off of uh, the web. It's a used battery. It was reported as being in tested and working condition. Uh, that is not the case. I've gone through several charge and discharge cycles with this thing and it reports after a couple minutes of being connected to the camera that it has a full charge uh, or it'll just, just say that it needs to charge for a couple of minutes after which point the charge light will turn off you'll think you have a full battery connected to the camera and then it will start complaining that uh, the battery is going dead and no matter how many times you discharge and charge it the same thing keeps happening so pretty much a lost cause at this point decided to take this one apart and inspect the cells and you might actually be able to see over here what is likely the culprit leaking battery acid this one right here this one over here I've got this one over here which is very leaky there are a few good ones that uh, I'm going to take a multimeter to definitely don't try this at home because it got very dangerously close to uh, damaging the exterior of the battery and when you do that very bad things happen with lithium batteries this is the culprit for the infolithium issues that I'm experiencing currently this chip is what relays the message on about the battery time and that you're using a genuine battery so I suspect that something to do something with this is what's causing the problem with this battery and this one, but now it seems to be working fine in this camcorder, so I don't know.
I'm actually going to disconnect that battery, put it in this camcorder, and see if it starts working. Though I have my reservations about believing that. I'm wondering what's going to happen. I just stuck the camera in, or the battery in the camera, pressed record before it even has a chance to show me the battery display on screen. So I'm wondering if it'll start working or it'll complain that it's not an info lithium battery and then cut power to the uh, the whole camera. Because now it's re reporting that it's got 130 minutes of life remaining. This was the one that I was just using to start this video. This is just a uh, off-brand battery that replaces the FM-FM50 or the NP-FM50. This is a 16.56 watt hour. And it's interesting, that's one thing I have noticed that's kind of good about these aftermarket batteries because even though they're reported to be a similar uh, size or capacity, in this case this one's supposed to replace the FM50, if I look at an actual FM50, it says it's an 8.5 watt hour. This one is supposedly 16.56 watt hours. Wish, maybe you know what I should do to change this so this looks a little less counterfeit? <laughs> is take the badge off of the, uh, the bad batteries. <laughs> I'm sure that can't be too difficult, and I have enough that are that are garbage, so if I screw them up, it's no great loss. And transfer that badge onto this one. That might be an interesting endeavor. Well, I just, uh, I was able to get the last uh, clip to uh, record and, and have the camcorder use this battery without any complaints, but then when I went to stop the uh, the recording, it immediately realize that or it said that it, it thinks that it's not an info lithium battery even though it is I turned the camera off turned it back on and now it's showing that error again the, mi the minute you turn it on so that means that uh, this battery is going to get a pink tag placed on it as this too is not working so I'm not sure what I'm going to do right now because this battery is very nearly toast or the actual cells inside there's a total of three or four that I've counted that are visibly leaking acid. And I uh, really don't know what I'm going to do. I could probably try to rebuild this uh, battery, but I don't even know if that's worth the trouble because I could just buy aftermarket ones uh, for very little online. Although it is kind of neat to see how these things are built. I could always keep the shell if I absolutely wanted to be a bit of a purist and then get the aftermarket replacement that works and transfer its internals into this shell. I would of course have to resolder these uh, connections for the data for the, bat the info lithium system and then the positive and negative for the cells and solder that back onto the board. I don't know if I'd want to mess around with a brand new battery that I just bought. So I've actually been cycling through all the batteries that uh, I've accrued over the years and I've just kind of tossed on this shelf and I've used here and there. What I've tried to start doing now is as I'm transferring videotapes and, and using these cameras again, these uh, Digital 8 and Hi8 camcorders that use the uh, L or the F-Series and the M-Series info lithium batteries, is to cycle through them and give them a bit of a workout because just letting them sit on a shelf is not doing any wonders for their longevity. And what's interesting is I actually came across... This uh, NP-F330 that's been in the family for probably close to 20 years hasn't seen a charge in just about that long. And the thing just miraculously, uh, I connected up to the aftermarket charger. This one that's having a crack right now at the NP-F950. And it took a charge. After about an hour and a half, the red light turned off, went to green connected this up, I left it on a camcorder uh, with the halogen spotlight turned on and it was able to keep up with no issues whatsoever. Uh, and that seems to be what I've been doing so far to thoroughly test these batteries is by connecting them up to a Sony Handycam with a halogen spotlight and then I leave the LCD screen on, I put night shot on, leave the halogen spotlight on and that seems to pretty thoroughly test whether or not things are going to behave in the battery be it the info lithium board or the cells themselves because like what I've learned so far with this battery and many others that I've tested is that all seems to be stars and moonbeams until you actually go to uh, produce a bit of a draw on the battery be it using the tape mechanism the LED or the halogen spotlight such as the case may be and that's when things start to lose the plot so this battery is a bit of a write-off I just find it very interesting though how the lower capacity L series and M series batteries seem to survive, uh, stand the test of time 
much better than the higher capacity models. This is another one here. Where is it? You have to pardon the uh, pretty poor camera angle, but this is another one that was just discovered, an NP-F550, high, slightly higher capacity upgraded battery over the uh, budget F330 that came with the cameras when they were new, bundled in the box. And the same thing, it took a charge and it's working just fine. So I don't know what it is with these lower capacity L-series and even the M-series batteries for the most part, seeming to take a charge and work just fine as if they were new many, many years after they were last in use. Whereas these higher capacity batteries, they just don't seem to stand the test of time. And I'm wondering if maybe that has something to do with them not being fully discharged and recharged very often and they develop what's called passivation of the battery cells. I've read that you can use, I believe, a uh, 10 watt, 10 ohm, some kind of a resistor um, bridge between the positive and negative, and of course that will get hot, but it will slowly draw down the battery. Though I don't know how well it will actually work if the, the battery itself is you know, thinking it's full, and then you connect it up to the camera, and it triggers the low, uh, low voltage cutoff. Wouldn't that same thing happen with using a resistor? And here is another one, same exact thing. It's reporting that it's got seven hours, two minutes of battery life. That's, yeah, not happening. I'll take that and connect it up to this one. I'm not a psychic, but I can see in the future that within the next minute, this is going to start complaining that it's also got a low battery. And again, the low voltage uh, cutoff will kick in and turn the camera off. See, it says 381 minutes. Turn on that halogen spotlight. Wait and see what happens. Is it actually going to behave now on camera? Probably, because that's just the way these things go. But I can assure you that when I put it in this camera to record the video with, it uh, once I started using the tape mechanism, it just started uh, complaining that it was going dead. So we will see. Well, while that battery and camera is thinking about what it's going to do, this is the uh, NP-F950. This is not the absolute highest capacity model that Sony ever produced, but it comes in at a whopping 32.4 watt hours. And I've tried charging and just charging this thing using a number of cameras that accept InfoLithium L-series batteries. And they all ch they just sit there and they show the flashing battery indicator on the LCD screen. Uh, but they don't actually ever get to a point where they estimate how long it'll take to charge and so on and so forth. Or how much battery life remains. So I ended up using one of these which have been reported to uh, have some success in bringing back uh, cantankerous old batteries that would rather be left for dead than uh, rejuvenated and put back into service. I threw it on here, let it charge overnight, I woke up to a green light and connected this up to a camera and it just cycled on and off real quick and actually flickered on and off. And that was the end of that. And I think I can kind of suspect what's going on in here just like that one over there but even a worse uh, Sit worst situation and what's going on over there is the battery sounds extremely crunchy. I'm sure there's a nice crust of uh, acid in there from the battery leak, the cells leaking out. And if I were to pop this thing open, it would actually confirm that. Ah, I caught it on video. So this one got about five minutes of uh, my little diatribe here on batteries until it decided to give up the ghost. So that was a little bit better than this one over here which you got probably 30 to 40 seconds out of and that was it. And then the same thing. So this one was also complaining of a, of a low battery which is quite unfortunate because uh, I was hoping to at least get one good M-series high capacity battery out of this whole little uh, fool's errand of uh, trying to resuscitate from the dead old infolithium and batteries. <laughs> so now I need a good working battery. That one over there is still complaining that it's low, but it's not actually turned off. Although the halogen spotlight is turned off, and I'm sure if I turn that on, it's going to go dead real fast. So all this is to say, in a very roundabout sort of way, cycle through your batteries. Don't just buy a high capacity battery, charge it, leave it on the shelf and, and never use it. Run it down. Seems to me, again, in my very unscientific research and findings, and if empirical evidence is anything to go off of, that uh, getting a high capacity battery and never letting it run down and then charging it back up 
seems to really kill them quite quickly. That or people just buy these high capacity batteries and they just never use them. They end up using the low capacity batteries uh, that they came with. I Beats me. Probably the last little issue that uh, I've also discovered aside from the uh, infolithium errors or the batteries saying they're fully charged when they go dead after about five or ten minutes is this kind of an issue where the battery is just totally kaput. Oh, there we go, it just turned off. I knew it was going to. So this is another NP-FM50. Looks relatively newer because it has this recycle logo on it, whereas the older ones, uh, if I could find one, well, this uh, high capacity battery that I ripped apart is one such example of the older design. So you can see that it's got this sticker talking about interference that it may cause to other devices. And then it has this style back panel and sticker. And so this is the newer style, if I'm not mistaken. A little bit more updated. The digital interference is now disclaimed over here on this white sticker. And it has this recycle logo and sticker up here. So this is a newer style battery, uh, newer than this one. And if I go to connect this up to the charger, it's going to beep at me, letting me know it's going to start trying to charge it. And it's going to go through and probably tell me that it's either totally full or totally dead. No way at all that this battery has four hours and nine minutes, because if I just take that, try to turn it on, nothing happens. It's completely dead. As a brief aside, I came across this uh, Sony NP-C65 battery. And it actually looks like, it almost looks like it's a precursor to the uh, Infolithium M-Series batteries that actually have a little push-button indicator that show you the battery level. And this one probably had that, and it worked just fine when this battery was new. It doesn't. This is an old nickel-cadmium battery from the late 90s, a very old video aid only handy cam. And it's gotten a fair bit of use in its past life, but it doesn't work anymore. But something that's rather interesting that you'll never see on any new batteries these days is a built-in charger this thing right up here it says push you just push it in push it out and this actually plugs right into the wall and charges your battery without any kind of a separate dongle or adapter you just plug this right in the wall and you are good to go this will conclude this video on uh, useless information answering questions that nobody asked on uh, old infolithium batteries and uh, what I've been trying to do to resuscitate them.